Eugene the Fit. Check out my website, eugenethefit.com. See the daily tips. Get a program. Follow me at Eugene the Fit. Now let's get it. So you made it through the whole week unscathed. Your time is now. Time for you to shine. You hit all your workouts with the proper intensity. Followed all your nutritional directions. That carrot on the end of the stick, you finally reached it. This might be the only reason you died in exercise. Cheat meal. All a cheat meal is, is you taking the time to indulge in maybe some kind of craving that you've been having. You want to try something new. Some sort of food that would typically be on your banned list. Uh, one of those no-goes. It could be desserts like ice cream, cookies. Could be uh, loaded foods like, let's say, lasagna or some sort of pasta, pizza, triple cheeseburger, whatever your heart desires at the moment. But notice I said cheat meal, not cheat day. They're two separate things. The reason I draw a distinction between the two is because you're not going through an entire day of indulging. If you were to do so, then you're going to pedal backwards and ruin a lot of the progress you made. But if you were to have a cheap meal, it's possible to keep going forward and, in fact, utilize that cheap meal to push you forward, depending on your circumstance. Let's start with the pros, the positives, the yeah, let's do it side of a cheap meal. Let's say you are dieting to lose body fat. And in doing so, that means you're in a caloric deficit. So you eat less calories than you need to maintain your body. When you do this, there's a strong chance that over time your body's going to adjust and slow your metabolism down because it's trying to uh, optimize this new process based on the amount of energy you're now supplying it with. So when it does this, it slows your metabolism and it can hinder your long-term progress and you'll start to slow down you'll see the gains come to a steady halt and to prevent that a cheat meal could be a good way so you could use it as a day to eat more calories than you need to maintain your body just to trick your body into keeping the metabolism up longer and to keep that progress steady going now you may feel like it's counterintuitive but in the long run this is what's going to get you where you want to go and keep you there uh, so cheat meal could be good for that. A cheat meal could be good for refilling your glycogen stores. Again, you're still in a caloric deficit, uh, trying to lose body fat. So you're going to be lower in carbs. And that means through your exercise and especially your weight training or high intensity cardio, you'll drain your glycogen stores. And this cheat meal could be a time to eat extra carbs to refill those glycogen stores so you can perform as best as you can in the weight room throughout the rest of the week until it's time to refuel again. Of course, those of us in the in the health life, uh, really about this fitness, really working on improving our bodies or challenging ourselves or whatever the case, you may be surrounded by others who aren't so much in that and they may tempt you and be like, yo, why don't you come out to eat with us? Or you go out with them and you decide to eat something light or not eat at all. There's plenty of times I go to a restaurant with my family and I just sit there with my water because I know my goals I have in mind and they support that because they understand. So make sure you're around people who support your mission. And if they don't, you keep that in mind and you stay strong enough to say, I'm not going to let you hold me back because at the end of the day, I have to look in the mirror and deal with what's going on. So... But it is good for socializing every now and then if you want to be able to indulge, hang with your folks, hang with your friends, and it's an opportunity for you to do so. Get to scratch that itch, get to fulfill those desires you had that you've been putting off because you've been working so hard in and out of the gym. Now, if you're dieting to gain weight, you want to put on more muscle, put on some mass, then your cheat meal protocol is a little different. Your reasons are a little different. At least for myself, I know that I don't have as many cravings when I'm bulking because I'm already eating so many calories. I'm full all day long. I wake up full. So 
I don't have the urge to go out and eat something extra. But if you want to, all you got to do is just substitute a meal. You're eating so many calories anyway. Substituting a meal wouldn't be such a big deal. But if you decide to have a cheat meal and it puts you so far above what you're eating on a regular basis, uh, you're going to raise your likelihood of fat storage, of course, because you're already in a caloric surplus. And if you're following the lean bulking protocol, it can throw you a little off track because you're trying not to put on so much extra fat, especially if you want to stay in a low body fat range, like you have photo shoots and such throughout the year, so you want to bulk slowly. So keep that in mind. So the cons, the reason to stay away from a cheat meal, the reasons to say no or have great distance between your cheat meals could be if you're a relapse, if having a cheat meal will take you back to your previous not as healthy life or if you have some sort of problem with food, you're an emotional eater or something of the nature and having a cheat meal could possibly take you down that road. Knowing yourself is above everything, so you know you. If that could happen, then I would stay away from it. Another reason to stay away from it would be if you tend to overindulge. Like, for example, me. I know when I have a cheat meal, I go hard. Uh, it's not a joke. Uh, it was so nice. Like, I used to like cheese bowls from Olive Garden. Yeah, I know. Filthy. I love the cheese bowls with the... Now I get the garlic bread. And I usually have something like lasagna with it. Then I come home and eat a 24-pack of cookies with some bluebell vanilla ice cream. And that will be a cheat meal for me. But I'm also aware of how I get down. So I'll have one cheat meal a month or so. Knowing yourself is the most important part. If you know you overindulge and your cheat meal is going to take you off track, your cheat meal shouldn't take you backwards. It should help propel you forward or at least keep you in place at worst. So be aware of where your cheat meal could take you. And if you overindulge as I do, also keep in mind that you're going to gain water weight immediately. Now this isn't fat storage because it doesn't happen as quickly. Now if this is going to take you into a negative spiral and you start to feel like, oh man, I'm wasting everything or I'm trash now, like I'm no good worthless and you go down this path and which eventually leads to you quitting then stay away from it that simple but to avoid the water weight stuff cheat within reason like i said a little above your maintenance level will help you maintain your metabolism if you're dieting for fat loss so for the frequency of cheating you want to take heed to the information throughout the video it'll help you Paint a picture on what's the best route for you, which could be anywhere from weekly to every other month to maybe just even holidays or even not at all. Like for me, I go probably monthly or every other month or so. I don't really have a cheat meal schedule anymore. But when I am having a cheat meal, I plan for it. I try not to do it uh, spontaneously. So... Know what you want to do if you're staying pretty much within your calories when you have a cheat meal. Uh, you can even go weekly and still make progress. It'll probably throw your macros off for that day, but that wouldn't hurt too bad. Uh, if you're using your cheat meals as a refuel day, it could still possibly be weekly depending on what your calories are the rest of the week. It could be every other week. It's all case by case. If you're curious about your particular situation and you want some insight just shoot me a message i'll help you out figuring what your cheat meal schedule should be if one at all so the protocol for the cheat meal is first plug everything track it all the good the bad the ugly put it all in your calorie counting app so you can know this is what happened or this is what's going to happen i say what's going to happen because you want to plan it ahead of time you want to know exactly what you're going to eat for this cheat meal but in the case that you do it spontaneously, you can still plug it in and adjust going forward. So the subsequent days, you're like, all right, I did this then. So for me to adjust to keep me on track as a total trend in the correct direction, I can do that. Because 
it's all just a big picture. The whole mosaic is supposed to look beautiful at the end. And one little rough brush stroke is not going to take the whole painting out of place if you do what you're supposed to do for the rest of the painting. So remember, a cheat meal is not a cheat day. A cheat day can throw you way off track. A cheat meal, in fact, can propel you if done correctly. If you overindulge like me, you really want to spread these cheat meals out. If you stay within range, you can cheat a little more frequently. But remember, if the cheat meal is going to make you spiral, you should stay away. But regardless of what you do, track it all. The good, the bad, the ugly. And you can adjust accordingly. And you know exactly what's working for you or what's not. What threw you off, what kept you on track. It's all there. So if you found this helpful, hit like, subscribe to my channel, follow me at the Fit. Check out my website, eugenefit.com, see the daily tips, get you a program. Now let's make it happen.